Laura A. Grace here, the author of Dear Author Letters from a Bookish Fangirl, Team Lines of Poetry Collection, and Finding God Anime Devotional for Tokus, which is free on a variety of platforms. I'll leave a link down below in case if you'd like to check it out. Happy Wednesday, my friends! I am so, so excited that you're here. I am excited for another Top 5 Wednesday. Oh my goodness! Though, even though I'm really excited for today's prompt, it was super hard. It was super, super, super hard. <laughs> but in case if you're not familiar with Top 5 Wednesday, Top 5 Wednesday was formed by Lainey back in 2013. The group is now since on Goodreads, and I'll also leave a link down below in case if you'd like to check it out. Basically, each week our host creates a series of prompts, and then on Wednesday we answer those said prompts with books, but in this case, I'm doing manga. Like I said, welcome back to another Top 5 Wednesday. Today's prompt is favorite authors. We all have those auto buy authors where regardless of what the book is about, regardless if we read the blurb or even see the cover, we're already hitting that pre-order button because we know we're going to want to read this book by them because they're one of our favorite authors. So today we're talking about our top five favorite authors. And if we were talking about novels, this would be a completely different story. But with manga, and maybe because I've only been reading manga for about, we'll just say two to three years. I only had like three and only technically one of them I feel like actually counts for the prompt of like the whole auto buy thing. I can't say that I have a lot of auto buy mangaka. I really don't know why. I think it's just because the series that I've really, really loved, like one of them is it, there's only one series by that Monica. So, I mean, even if I was like, yes, I'm going to go buy whatever the, else they have, I can't because she only wrote one series. So, I'm going to do my best. I figured for the first three, I'm going to say that I definitely know would be like in my top favorites of Monica that I absolutely love, want to devour all of their work. And I do have a story about one of them. So, let's go ahead and jump right in. And to kick us off at number one, really excited, I'm going to say Yoko Nogiri. Oh my goodness, this is a like prime example of order like buying pre-ordering something before I even read the blurb I had read her other two series that wolf boy is mine and love and focus and then when I saw she had a new series coming out from Kuracha, I went ahead and pre-ordered this because I knew I was gonna love her work I really love her female characters a lot her heroines they're very compelling to me I find them very relatable and I just love how sweet and caring they are they're absolutely amazing and some of them are my favorite heroines that I've read in manga so I knew for sure that I was gonna want to get this series and I'm hoping that she'll write more because I'm like I need more of her work and I'm really excited because I think as the time of posting this video we should have volume five already out and yes I did pre-order it I think I have up to volume seven on this series pre-ordered <laughs> even though I think I've only read up to volume three I think and I decided to wait in continuing to read the series not because I wasn't enjoying it I'm really really enjoying the series I think this might be my favorite so far I don't know I really love that I really loved as I was to say the series I really love that with boy is mine a lot but this would be my second favorite from her but I saw I think it was like volume two or three three was like pretty small and I was like you know what we're just gonna wait we're just we're just gonna hold off so that I can binge read a bunch of volumes in one not in one sitting but at once and so that's why I haven't gone back to finish and catch up what I have so far but I absolutely love this series I love this manga I said her art is absolutely gorgeous she just writes such beautiful and amazing stories hers are one that I would always recommend to any shoujo manga lover and one that really likes more of a I definitely would say slice of life, but also just more, they're not as intense. They're very easygoing stories, I feel, with not a lot of high stakes. So it's just a very nice, relaxing read. And that's been true so far, I think, for all of them. For number two, this Monica only has this current workout, and I would love if they wrote more. Like, it would not hurt my feelings whatsoever if they did. And that Monica is Haruichi Furudate, the Monica of Haikyuu. Yes, I absolutely love Haikyuu. Finally read it, did a video review, and I'm so, so excited. It was so amazing. I loved this series just Hinata is everything. I know that there are spinoffs of Haikyuu and there are the light novels, which I really wish would get printed in English. 
I would definitely get that. And I'm really excited that when that the Shonen Jump Fest that they announced that there's going to be a radio drama and the manga is the one that is writing it. Oh my goodness. I have never been so excited for a radio drama like ever. <laughs> I really hope somehow that maybe it'll get translated in English. If not, I really need to up my game on learning Japanese because I'm like, yes, I must read it. I love I love his work. It's just, it's so, I don't even know. I don't even know how to put it into words, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I just really love it. And it might be just because I love the characters. And maybe that's what it is. Haruichi can just write some amazing characters. Like, not just Hinata and not just because he's my absolute favorite. But I feel like just as a whole, his characters are so compelling and their arcs and their growth just is everything. Like, this series, it's really hard to like not like anyone like because you end up liking everybody and so I really love that and I thought that was very very interesting so if he ever like publishes anything else written specifically by him that gets translated in English heck yes I'm gonna be reading it I'm gonna be pre-ordering it ASAP for number three I'm really excited to mention this one and hopefully it's okay because I've only read this series but her other series are so incredibly hard to find it's ridiculous so but that is Iyo Saki Saka. I read Strobe Edge last year thanks to Tweak of Beneath the Tangles, Jen at the Artist Librarian on Instagram, Marg Reads Manga. She's like here on YouTube or Marg at Marg Reads Manga. She's here on YouTube and she's on Instagram. Oh my goodness, this was absolutely amazing. I did do a video review of this one as well, and I am hooked on her work. It has been so ridiculously hard to find her other series. Like, oh my goodness, but I am on the bandwagon. I see why so many people say that she is just such a favorite for them. Her characters are so compelling as well, and the art, oh my goodness, is some of the best. Like, I love it. It's just, ah! It's so good. There's definitely a lot of angst in her, at least in Strobe Edge, and I can imagine in her other works as well. And let me just pause or do a timeout. Like, oh my goodness. So years ago when her latest series that just finished, Let Me, Let Me Not, I actually had bought volume one. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I didn't click with the series right away. I don't know. I didn't even finish the whole series, guys. Like, I didn't even finish it, and I got rid of it. I can't tell you how much I regret that decision now. I, I don't know why. Like, I, I think back, and I'm like, I know that I read... It, not even the first chapter, not even the first chapter. And I just didn't connect with it right away. I said for whatever reason, and then I got rid of it. And I'm like, now I'm trying to find volume one. I'm trying to find volume one and I have not been able to find it anywhere. I can find like the later half of the series, but the first half is like a no go. So, uh, so anyway, that's just a random little side story. And Yes, I really want to read her other series. I absolutely love Strobe Edge, and it's just, it is so good. I mean, her her storytelling and her, her art and just the notes that she personally writes to the readers, I absolutely love. Like, that is one of my favorite things in manga. I love when we have mangaka that leave little genuine notes to the reader, and there are times I'm like, I just want to come hug you because your writing and your, like, art are amazing. Don't bash it. Don't think it's horrible because, like, it's so, so good. So I already told myself that if we get another series by her, yes, I'm going to pre-order that. I don't care what it's about. I am pre-ordering it. I am not missing out on another Iosaki Saka manga. No, I'm, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I don't know if she has another manga in the, or manga in the works. Hopefully she does because I'm like, I am not making the same mistake twice. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> So yes, Iosaki Saka, definitely in my top three that I absolutely love. Just got to catch up on the bandwagon here. And speaking of catching up for number four, this is another one that I'm slowly catching up and that is Sue Morishita. Oh my goodness, you guys have heard me gush about Sign of Affection more than once. I won't stop gushing about this series because I absolutely love it. I have a video review here. I've even like thought about like doing individual video reviews as the series progresses because I recently read volume four because it released and it is just so good. It continues to be one of my favorite and I just, oh, I love these characters. So I know she has another series out and that is Shortcake Cake. This was her, I think her debut manga. 
And I was late to the party, and now I'm trying to collect this one, so, because I loved this series, and I've heard really good things about this one, and I'm just like, uh, now I can't say, unlike, you know, with Love Me, Love Me Not, I can't say that I bought this and then got rid of it. Um, I recently found this volume actually at my local Barnes and Nobles and picked it up ASAP. I didn't even know what it was about. I'm pretty sure this is a boarding house manga, and I thought it interesting. Because long story short, I saw that there was a seller on Macari that was selling the first six volumes for a really good deal. And I almost got it, but I didn't want to pay the shipping because anyway, it was like a bundle and I was trying to get just those. But I was like, uh, no, don't want to pay the $10 in shipping. No, thank you. <laughs> so I went on Right Stuff and I thought it interesting that Right Stuff says this is actually a reverse harem or it's like shoujo with a reverse harem. I was pretty surprised by that. So yes, I definitely want to read this series and I'm determined to try and pick up this series hopefully, if not this year, next year when all the hopefully printing shortages and all the printing stuff is like back to normal or at least a closer thing of normal. But Asai of Affection got me hooked on her work. I really, really love the storytelling and again the art just like with Strobe Edge. The characters are just so beautiful inside and out. I just... Oh my goodness, like this romance is everything. I love it so, so much. And I'm hoping for the same awesomeness in Short Cake Cake. And should there be another series, I know she's still working on a sign of affection, but yes, I'm gonna be brutering that so I don't make the same mistake with Short Cake Cake. Yes, I am fixing it. I learned my lesson and yes, I just need more of her work for sure. For number five, this was the manga that I actually mentioned at the beginning. That's the only series by her, but should she release something else, I would totally read it. And so for, I'm going to say for my last favorite manga on this list is Haruho Shina. Oh my goodness. Kimi ni Toroke is a classic. It, I mean, it is so good and I highly recommend it to everybody who loves shoujo. Like, yes, you must read it. I have a video review here. It's one of my most popular videos on this channel and it is a classic for good reason. Karuho, her storytelling is phenomenal. I mean, I feel like her romance just shines and radiates off the page. It is so awesome and so sweet and so, oh my goodness, like you follow them from the beginning of high school all the way to the end and just, it is everything. Like I could not imagine, I mean, I can, but I can't at the same time, like, cause I wish I could have been a reader who picked this up, like when I started high school and then like graduate with these characters at the same time, like that would be absolutely incredible. I mean, the characters all of them are so real and just their characters are just so individual. Like it's not just about our main couple here. Like each character has their own spotlight and grows and shines and I love it. Like this is just such an amazing story. It's such an amazing story. Like I said, the art's really pretty and I just was totally hooked on this story from the beginning and this was one of the yeah, the first manga series I read outside of Library Wars. I would say later though, I feel like it's the first series like during the day where I binge read seven volumes in a day. I never did, I had never done that before. That was my very first time I did it, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before that, like during my kids' break. Yeah, I was just binge reading Kimini Toto okay? <laughs> Like I loved it so much and I cried, I laughed, I celebrated, I was angry. Like I felt such a wide range of emotions and I really, I loved it so, so much. I, I loved it. And you know, probably a lot of these manga are my favorite because of how they write these characters that really just, you know, they become your friends. They become your friends. And that's probably why I feel like all these Monica are my favorite and why I feel like when I'm like I'm like I am talking about the Monica and why they're my favorite right like not just gushing about their characters but that just shows how amazing of writers that they are and speaking of friends I have to do an honorable mention but I sort of feel like this one is cheating just a little bit because I feel like I don't know. Let me show it to you and then I'll explain what I read. So for my honorable mention, I'm going to say Iechiro Oda. Oh my goodness. One Piece. Yes. So here's the thing though. I haven't actually technically read One Piece. It is definitely on my goal. Thanks to the manga sloth. He actually was the one that got me and my husband hooked on this manga and well hooked on the anime I should say. I was like I'm gonna try the anime and now I've really 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 been wanting to read the manga and I keep thinking of like how can I go ahead and start this 
but like still have time to read other manga because I don't know how long it would take me to try and like read a hundred volumes. I, I don't even know like if I just read One Piece. But the reason I wanted to include Oda on this list is because I really love One Piece. His word building is phenomenal and we like me and my husband, he is definitely one of our pre-order manga, but we've been with One Piece, we're not buying the individual volumes, so we just wait for the box set, even though it's been so hard not to be getting the newest volumes. But my husband it has a lot of self-control and he actually hasn't even opened up the box set for the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. But we do have all of the manga per the box set, so we have all of the manga for that. We have One Piece Ace's story, which technically is not written by Oda, but it's inspired by his world. And I'm like, yes, yes, like we must have this. And I know, I know that Oda, or at least I'm pretty 99% sure, he wrote a manga that is centered around Ace, but the mangaka of Dr. Stone is the one that illustrated it. And I just need it to be in English. Ace is one of my favorite characters. And I actually made sure that my husband got this series because I'm like, it has Ace. I mean, that's it. Like, that's like, that is it. In fact, um, Megan at the, oh, goodness, I can't remember her handle off the top of my head right now. I'll try and leave it here though, or on this side. But Megan recently shared a meme where it was like, you can only save five people from the world of One Piece. Who would you save? And I was like, oh my goodness. I knew number one would be Luffy. Number two would be Ace, but I'm like, who would be the other three? So I absolutely love Luffy and Ace and just, they're so, so amazing. So we got this one as well. And then I was so excited. I like convinced my husband, not with a lot of convincing, but I made sure that we pre-ordered this and that is Pirate Recipes by Sanji. Oh my goodness. This cookbook is phenomenal and I love the art. I love the back. It's really, really cool because it talks at like, Here's a good one. So it'll give you the recipe right here, but it also tells you about like what scene it's from. And look at Chopper. <laughs> it is so good. There's some really great recipes in here and just the art is really awesome too. I haven't actually cooked anything out of this because it's been at my husband's desk because he likes having it there. So hopefully here soon. And last but not least, we also have the Color Walk Compendium. We have the volumes one and two. I don't know if there's a volume three, but we have all of the One Piece stuff out that is like in books or manga or light novel that has been translated in English because we're just One Piece junkies. So I feel like I wanted to mention Oda because even if I haven't read all of his work, I love his storytelling. I love his characters and word building. So he would definitely Definitely though, whatever he writes, I know my husband would want to get his stuff and so would I. So I felt like it needed to be included even though I haven't actually read Oda's work. And I'm so sorry, Oda. And now my friends wraps up the five Monica and one honorable mention that are some of my favorites that I really either want to read more of and definitely fixing past mistakes that I will get any of their new stuff ASAP and have been looking for their older series for a while on Makari and just trying to find some of those out of print or out of stock volumes. But who are some of your favorite Monica? I would love to hear them. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Bye!